today for your rundown of AI news and the latest and greatest in AI tools. I'm Kit Bodner, the CMO of HubSpot. I'm here with Kieran Flanagan, the CMO over at Zapier, and this is Marketing Against the Grain. Let's get into today's show. There is so much happening in the world of business marketing and AI where they all come together that we had to add another show in the week where we give you the best in terms of AI news as well as new AI tools that have come on the market. Kieran. I'm excited. There's so much happening in the world. Mine and Kip's WhatsApp is a stream of updates on AI. And so we want to, we want to have just some fun to do a quick 10 minute episode where we can just give you the quick hits and so you know everything that's happening across tools, AI updates, all of the crazy stuff that's going on. So first of all, Kieran, one of the things that has happened that I think I'm particularly excited about is the new ChatGPT iPhone app. Right, on the phone. Have you, been, have you been using it? I looked at it last night, I did not have access. You know what's really interesting? It's actually hard to find the one that is the official app. Yeah, the I official was, app. I downloaded it and started using it, and I was like, do I sign in on this? I'm yeah. not sure that it's actually the real app, right? So there's a ton of them here, but I do not see OpenAI. And they're all called like Open Chat, Open Smart Chat. It's super <laughs> sketchy. If I'm OpenAI, you got to do a little bit yeah, better job you clean marketing the mobile app and linking to it more predominantly on your homepage, on your website. It's kind of hard to find when they're rolling this this stuff out. So what I have heard people love most about the chat GPT mobile app, what I love most about it, Kieran, as well, is the audio dictation. It's got really great audio dictation. So when you're on the move, you can just speak your prompt to chat GPT and, and have it generate the prompt right there. Awesome. Which is much easier and much better than on your desktop or, or other device. It's what Siri was meant to be. Exactly. You can get a legit Siri experience now if you're using the chat GPT iPhone app. I think this is a game changer as well. I've heard a lot of people I know are using it and they're like, it's just so much better to use on the mobile. I think it's better to use on mobile than the desktop. And we know that a huge part of just the search and knowledge market exists on mobile. So it was a no brainer for them to roll it out. A couple other things happened this week. One, Kieran, Meta released it's new AI sandbox. I love this one because this is so funny, right? Okay, all right. So Meta released this new AI sandbox, which includes AI-powered tools to help marketers generate images and copy for ads. I think I know why you think this is funny, but I want to hear it. Well, it just is the kind of consistent theme that I've been bringing into the show, which is really all we do is put our money into these machines and then they take it and then they take the human out of it. Just give us your money. We'll create the ads for you. We'll create all of the things for you. We'll optimize it for you. We'll create the user segments for you. We'll create all the different keyword groups or ad groups that you need to have to better target all these people. We'll make the recommendations for you. We'll integrate those recommendations back into the ads to make your budget more efficiently to spend your budget on our platform. And so you start to lose any kind of like leverage you have at being good at these things. And there was a really great paper, actually a research paper, and it spoke to this, which is it begins to erode away experience yes. and things that you have learned. And it erodes that out of the equation and just levels the playing field for everyone. So the person who really didn't put in the time and effort to learn a bunch of stuff, get really good at that discipline, they have the same capabilities as someone who's like been really experienced can actually do that thing. And this is a good example why it's going to happen in advertising very, very fast, which is it's in all of these platforms interest to optimize your ads. So you'll spend more money. I thought you were going in a complete different direction, by the way. I thought you were going to make the joke. Anybody who's ever done any amount of advertising on Facebook, you know what happens? Your ad doesn't get approved or your ad gets pulled down right. because it's violating some part of their agreement. And I wonder now, like, will you be able to use meta AI tools and still have your ads banned? Everything's going to be vanilla. It's going to be so vanilla, dude. It's, it's going to be all averaged out. Everything will look the same, sound the same. If everyone's creating their ad copy with AI sandbox and their graphics with AI sandbox, then I probably want to do the opposite, right? Like it's the only way to differentiate. Yes, I think a hot take here is you probably want to test AI sandbox versus some non-AI sandbox ads and see what actually performs better. Yeah. And building on this, not to be outdone, our friends over at Google have also rolled out some AI tools for advertisers. So one of the lessons for everybody watching is that Where's there going to be a lot of innovation in AI tools? Ads. Because that's where the money is, baby. Yeah, go so all the these companies are going to be pushing AI advancements to ads 
first and foremost, right? Yeah. The Google AI tools, one quick note before we move on. I think one of the interesting things that came out in that news is they are also providing recommendation for YouTube creators. And so they're obviously this going awesome. to look at all of the historical data they have in YouTube and be able to give YouTube creators ideas on what works. And so again, leveling the playoff field, being able to get much more creators into YouTube and be more successful. A little bit like the reason TikTok was really successful is because they randomly give everyone's videos a little bit of engagement. So everyone feels a little bit like a winner and it actually increases the amount of people who will create videos for that platform. I think Google won the initial AI tools rollout for brands and for creators because of the YouTube features. Yes, they rolled out those same type of ad creation features that Facebook did, but where they're really gonna win is enabling their creators to be more successful. And Facebook up to this point has been a little less focused there. You wanted to talk about Sam was in Washington. Yeah, well, the question everybody's Congress. gotta be asking is why does OpenAI wanna regulate itself so freaking badly? I think there's two, maybe there's three obvious reasons. Number one, Regulation is a great way to build moats. And so if, yes. they can, if you write the rules, it's much harder for everybody yeah. else to, to play in the game, right? To compete. Number two, they actually do want to be regulated because they have seen the things that happen with these systems. Like they're much more closer to the problem. And so maybe they have the foresight to say, hey, if there is zero regulation here, things can go awry really, really fast. And number three is... The U.S. Congress really don't know how to operate anything technical. Well, they're not high, high tech experts. And so right? any, any kind of like idea that they could potentially regulate AI is so ridiculous that they may as well just go in there and say, yeah, do it. Uh, we totally agree with you. Everyone agrees with them. Play nice. And then nothing will ever come of it. Correct. I, I think that last reason is really what Sam and the folks at OpenAI and, and, and folks at Google and other folks who are spending time in front of the U.S. regulators are trying to do, which is show their credibility so that they can be deeply involved in the regulation process and the regulatory process versus having somebody who doesn't understand the industry kind of create a bunch of crazy regulation. Or understand open source. I feel like the idea that you can regulate open source is a little bit laughable. It's very hard to regulate. Okay, so new AI ad tools, ChatGPT, iPhone app, open AI going in front of Congress, Sam talking in front of Congress, but that's not it, Kieran. On this show, in addition to the news, we want to cover some hot off the presses AI apps. And boy, do we have some interesting ones today. Kieran, well, the first one, I mean, I think goes near and deep to our heart, which is, you know, you and I both are fans of the show Mad Men, which, you know, at this point, I think has been off the air for years and years. But somebody has ma made ad agency. Well, hello there. Nice to meet you. Ready to weave some magic into your next advertising campaign? Which is an AI tool that helps you craft ad copy with a fun user interface featuring like Mad Men style advertisers. Like that's pretty awesome. That is cool. I'm on it now. Yeah. So I think this is like really cool, right? A good example of how you can integrate, consume that data and then actually have the output based upon that data. And so one of the things that I do a lot with ChatGPT is like, ask it to read a book or ask it to like model itself off a well-known author or someone who's like truly great at something and then provide me recommendations based upon those learnings. And this is a good example of a company that are doing that. I think what you're gonna see here is a lot of idea and ad generation technology. This goes a lot with what we talked about with Google and Meta. The concern that we have is that it's gonna create a bigger sea of sameness. And so we're gonna see if that actually happens or not, but that's, that's kind of the core concern we have here. One of the ones I want to talk about was actually Udly. Yeah. I really like this, right? Like it's a speech coach, which makes a ton of sense because you can actually- This one is awesome, I yeah. think. I think this is a really cool, cool one. Because you're doing things on Zoom, you can basically just record that and give it to the tool. And that tool will actually be able to give you a lot of recommendations in terms of how you speak. Imagine you have an important Zoom presentation that you give. And nobody you work with actually gives you any meaningful feedback about it. You could put that into this tool and it's going to give you coaching about how to do it better the next time. Right. And I've seen a couple That's of these sick. startups. I had, I actually had invested in one that was trying to do this real time for a sales team. So I, as you Ooh. spoke, it was sitting, it was like Grammarly, but in real time talking through like, Hey, you're not asking enough questions. You're not letting them speak enough. You're not asking enough discovery questions. So this is a little bit like that, but it's not in real time, but it gives you personalized coaching after the actual talk. And so I think that's really cool. I like the name of this next one, Kieran. It's Dragon. Drag, G-A-N. <laughs> I'm just gonna call it Dragon. I like it's Dragon. Dragon. I, I think it's that's it. Dragon. That's I know cool that thing. they're trying to reference some image technology and that's why it's got, G-A-N is, is the second part of it is an acronym. 
I don't care. I'm calling it Dragon. I think it sounds awesome. If you're going to have an AI startup, it, why not? Out of all the ones we're talking about, this is the demo. We'll bring up the demo on the tweet. This use case is sick, by it's the insane. way. It's insane. It's insane. This is... Uh, this makes video shopping or like photo shopping just incredibly easy. The drag and drop well, feature is insane. It's basically letting you create an AI generated image and then drag and drop edit it. Unbelievable. Like, come on. It's pretty amazing how much you can just tweak existing images in a pretty freaking crazy way. Right. I would go as far as to say that Dragon, just first of all, on name alone, is, is basically the tool of the week. I think it's a tool of the week, but I want to quickly cover Quiver because the thing that you and I have talked about a lot is there's, there's companies like Glean now that basically allow connect with all your internal apps and suck in the data and be able to allow you to ask questions of that data. So basically all of your employees should be able to query any question they want about, you know, company internal knowledge. And that's huge, especially for like new employees coming on board. This happened to me a lot. Like I'm trying to figure out what has been done in the past to try to move a metric or like anything like that. And if you're this docu- is one of your favorite pet rocks because yeah. you can never find anything you, can you never need. Find anything. So you love this category of tools. But there's all this like historical things that have been done as a company. Yes. And there usually are documented somewhere, but a new person comes in and then just tries to repeat the same side of things. And so if they could query and say, show me all of the experiments that have ever been run to like improve sign-up to upgrades. And it would pull all the information and give you the stats and what, what worked and what didn't work. Quiver is a little bit like that in that it's giving you a second brain, but you can actually store information with it and then query that information through a chat interface. And so basically what I'm really excited about is like AI means your capacity to retain knowledge is just like infinite and to retrieve that knowledge is just like infinite. And I think it's a really, I think it's a very, very cool tool solving a use case that is very applicable right now. Kieran loves what I call the outsource your brain use right, cases. hundred percent. That takes all the stuff you've done and seen and makes it really easy to recall it and, and find it. And I think Quiver, which we're going to link up in the show is a, is another good example. There's a lot of tools that are playing in this space. I think one of them is going to win. There's Quiver, there's Rewind, there's Glean on the like kind of the business side. There's a bunch of interesting tools here. Somebody's going to win this space because I think the category itself is exceptionally important. I agree. I got to tell you, I have one other fun one that we have to talk about. There's Bar GPT now, Kieran. There's a tool called <laughs> Bar like GPT that if you don't know what kind of drink you want, it will generate a drink and a recipe for you. So the next time we're in Dublin together, we're rolling into Peruk, we're opening Bar GPT, and we're gonna show the bartender the recipe. Okay, Isn't that bananas? But I thought that was a fun one. I think one of the other things that's great about AI is the cost and barrier to entry is so low that you get really fun tools like Bar GPT. And I'm excited to see all kind of the fun one-off kind of like use cases that are going to come. So this is our attempt at giving you the latest and greatest in terms of AI news and tools. We're going to be back with you next week with another episode like this. If you have comments about how we can make it better, hit us up in the YouTube comments and hit that subscribe button. And we will see you very soon on Marketing Against the Grain. This data is wrong every freaking time. Have you heard of HubSpot? HubSpot is a CRM platform where everything is fully integrated. Whoa, I can see the client's whole history. Calls, support tickets, emails, and here's a task from three days ago I totally missed. HubSpot. Grow better.